Okay, who remembers that slogan that the United Methodist Church adopted now well over 10 years ago? Open minds, open hearts, and open doors. I remember when it came out. When it first came out, some people said, well, you've got to be careful that your mind doesn't open so much that your brains fall out. Well, my response to that tends to be that you've got to have an open mind sufficient to use it. Too many people like to come to church. I know this is not true here, but there are some denominations and there are some churches where people like to come to church. They like to open a door on the side of their head, take their brain out, put it on the shelf, and then go into worship. I've seen that happen on multiple times. We can't do that, friends. We have to have our brains in our worship, the whole self, the mind, the heart, the spirit, the body. The whole self needs to be part of our prayers and our praise, our study, and our worship. Hence the proclamation, open minds, open hearts, and open doors. It's the calling for us to be totally open, Every bit of us, every part of us, every element of us, open to God, open to others, open to all. This is indeed uh, what the scripture is about today. Here in Luke 24, Jesus says, what it says about Jesus, then he, Jesus, opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Jesus opened their minds, open minds, to understand the scriptures, to understand the Torah, the prophets, the writings, the Hebrew scriptures, to understand the word of God and the meaning of the word of God then and there and here and now. Jesus opened their minds to understand God's calling on them to understand the gospel that they had just experienced, to interpret the events that they had lived through in the light of the Hebrew scriptures, and what those scriptures were saying about the Messiah and who the Messiah was truly supposed to be. Jesus opened their minds. And we're supposed to have open minds too. Minds opened by Jesus. Minds open to God. Minds open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Minds open to the calling. Open to others. Open to what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Not closed. Not already decided. Not shut to new understandings and new interpretations and new points of view and new experiences of God's moving in the world today. The more I have learned in the Christian life, the more I have learned in the faith of the church, the more I have learned, the more I have discovered that I need to learn more. That the learning process, the growth process in faith, in belief, in understanding, never ends. I look back on my understanding from uh, when I went through the ordination process, when I went to seminary, when I went to graduate school, when I worked on my master's degree, when I worked on my doctoral degree, and I look at what I did then, and I looked at the papers that I wrote then. I wonder, how in the world did they give me a passing grade for that? What a mess. What a mess I was. I have recorded sermons going all the way back into the 1990s, and I listen to those or watch those, and I go, what in the world was I thinking when I preached that, or was I even thinking at all? In other words, we continue to learn. We continue to grow. We continue to be open to what God is saying to us, or we're closed. We're called to have an open mind. I've studied the Bible for decades And I've led Bible studies for decades. I don't know how many times I've led a Bible study on the Gospels. Every time I do that, I learn something new, something deeper, something more amazing about God and God's wonderful grace and God's incredible love for us. I learn more about what I'm called to do as a disciple. I learn more every time I study the Scripture. I know that the more I learn, the more I need to learn. And the more learning, the more growing, the more opening my mind needs. Opening by the power of God. 
Every time I think I've got it all, I need Jesus to open my mind anew and blow it open by the breath of his spirit. Just like he did for the disciples there when he opened their minds to understanding the scriptures. We have to have open minds, open to what God is saying to us in all the many wonderful ways that God speaks through scripture, through hymns, through worship, through prayer, through the needs of others. We need to be attuned, open to what God is saying to us. We must have open minds. We also must have open hearts. What about open hearts? Where is that in this passage? And Jesus said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name. Let's take that first half, uh, repentance. Repentance and forgiveness. Let's take that first half, repentance. Metanoia in Greek, it means to change, to change one's mind, literally. That which Jesus has just opened, he's opened for us to change, to change. And not just the way we think, but what we do also changes. We must be opening, opened to God through the power of the Holy Spirit reaching into us to change us, our minds, and yes, our hearts. What we think and what we feel. What we think and what we do. This concept of repentance is critical. It's important for us. We must change not just what we think and say, but what we do and how we live. When we are caught in sin, the challenge to us is to turn around 180 degrees and go the other way. That is what repentance is about. And there's also forgiveness, because not only are we to have our minds open and our hearts open through an understanding, but also then we are to open ourselves to God's forgiveness and to forgiveness for others. To truly experience repentance, we must have been forgiven and we must be willing to forgive. Remember, Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, which we just prayed a little while ago this morning, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Some renderings of this come out, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Forgive us, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This repentance and forgiveness is the very characteristic of what it means to have an open mind and an open heart. Ready and willing to change. Ready and willing to have an open mind opened to the amazing mysteries of God's grace and ready and willing to have an open heart open to the need for forgiveness and the calling to forgive open to the needs of others, for we are called to love the Lord our God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Open minds, open hearts. What about this open doors stuff? That's also in the passage. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. All nations. Ethnoi in Greek means all ethnicities, all nations, all peoples, all non-Jewish people. In Hebrew, the phrasing would have been goyim, all the people who are currently outside of the covenant community of Yahweh Elohim, God, the creator of this universe. All the Jewish, excuse me, non-Jewish, non-Hebrew people. Us, my friends, we our ancestors were outside the covenant community back then. 
had the early church not become open to people who were very different from them, people who ate different kinds of food and dressed differently, talked different languages, came from different kinds of places, lived different kinds of lives, had the early church not opened its doors, we, you and me, we would not be here. Most of us would be worshiping some kind of God, one of the Norse pantheon of deities, Odin, or some other being. But instead, because the church opened its minds, its hearts, and its doors, because the church had its minds opened by Jesus, because the church had its hearts opened by Jesus, and the church opened its doors because of Jesus, because of that, you and I are here. The gospel, the good news, the love of God in Jesus Christ, the message of forgiveness and repentance, the message of the death and resurrection of Jesus, the message of the good news of Christ our Lord was opened to all of us. Because Jesus opened the minds and the hearts and, yes, the doors of the early Christian community. Open minds, open hearts, and open doors. The United Methodist proclamation, the United Methodist theme from the last decade. It's a, it's a way of spiritual life. It's an attitude of spiritual life, an approach to spiritual living that's at the heart of what it means to be a Methodist. Indeed, as I said last week, this is yet another way in which I love the United Methodist Church. As you know, I spent the first years of my life in the Methodist Church. I was loved and cared for, encouraged and educated in the Christian faith by United Methodist Sunday School teachers and preachers and pastors and the people in the pews who put up with me crawling underneath pews from pew to pew to pew following my friends and standing on the pews during the singing of hymns and being, quite frankly, uh, something of a mess. Anytime some child does something in worship services, my mother says, that's the curse coming back to get you, Greg. You earned it. And she's right. She's right. But I didn't stay a United Methodist. When our family moved to Richardson from Dallas, we fell out of regular church attendance. I tried lots of churches with my dad. I went to a Pentecostal church with him several times, where raising your hands all the time and singing praises to Jesus was a big thing that you did. And while I love to raise my hands in the liturgy, and I'll sometimes raise my hands in a hymn that touches my heart and soul, you know, uh, I'll say this about a Pentecostal church. Um, uh, Sometimes people should use deodorant. I mean, really, they should. Uh, I tried a friend's Presbyterian church once. Nice people, the chosen frozen. Uh, Great mind-stretching sermons, but it was a little too quiet and stolid for me. I went Episcopalian for a while, was confirmed in the Episcopal Church, enjoyed the liturgy and the communion every week, and while they had a choir that could sing wonderful hymns like ours, the congregation wasn't as good as y'all. I mean, they were just, ugh, they were awful in singing hymns. And I kind of got tired of the one-upmanship, the show that had to go on every single Sunday at St. Michael's and All Angels Uh, Episcopal Church in Dallas, which became known as St. Minx and All Cadillacs. It got tiresome, my friends. No, when it came down to it, in 1987, I came back to the United Methodist Church because while there were bits that I liked about other denominations and other churches, and some things I liked a lot about them, I felt most at home here in the United Methodist Church with its grace-filled open-minded, open-hearted, open-doors attitude. And that's largely what I've encountered in all the churches I've been privileged to serve as pastor. Over these past 30 years, I've ministered in many churches. And every single one of them, this one included, has always been a church filled with open-hearted, open-minded, and open-doored people. 
people who embraced me and loved me and cared for me and prayed for me and helped me and guided me. I can't tell you the number of time I had little old lady grandmothers in the congregation, especially early in my ministry when I didn't have gray hair. They were trying to match me up with their daughters and granddaughters. That was constantly happening, friends. Loving, wonderful congregations that blessed me and welcomed me and gave me a place to serve and proclaim the gospel. It was truly a blessing to serve in United Methodist churches, to be at home in congregations of faith, congregations that knew about being open to others. Your, your mission statement is a powerful one and a perfect example of this. Uh, we used to say every single Sunday before worship, we're going to start that next Sunday, by the way, we used to say we are a body of believers in Jesus Christ, united in faith, Dedicated to serving others. Our purpose is to welcome all, seek and serve others, and know the joy of loving Jesus Christ. That's it, my friends. A message of open minds, growing in faith together, open hearts, dedicated to serving others. And open doors, knowing the joy of loving Jesus Christ. My friends, do it. Keep doing it. And then do it even more. I want to end today inviting you to say this, this mission statement with me again. I know it's been a long time, over a year. So if you, if you stumble, it doesn't matter. Just say it with me now. We are a body of believers in Jesus Christ, united in faith, dedicated to serving others. Our purpose is to welcome all, seek and serve others, and know the joy of loving Jesus Christ. Be that people, knowing the joy of loving Jesus Christ. Be open in mind and heart and doors. Let the power of Jesus open you to the love of God for you and the love of God that you are called to share with all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may God's people say, In your prayer.